Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be covering best practices for PPC landing pages as well as providing a system that you can use to determine logical and emotional needs of your customer or your client's customers so that you can design high converting landing pages that generate leads using Google Ads traffic. And I won't be covering any of the technical implementation of building an actual landing page, but I'll cover high level information because that sort of information is better for a different video and there's plenty out there already showing you how to use software to build a landing page. So in a moment I'm going to be showing you an example design template I presented to a roofing client of mine to show you how these concepts come together, but for now let's just cover some theory. Effective landing pages are going to satisfy two different parties. One is going to be Google Ads and then two is going to be the visitor to your website or your client's customer. So first we want to ask ourselves what each one of these parties wants. On Google's side of things, they built their massive brand by providing the most relevant and quality results to people's searches. And for this reason, they reward advertisers who provide great landing page experience because it builds people's trust in their platform. So landing page experience factors into a metric known as quality score, which negatively or positively affects how much you'll spend on a click to your ad. People with high quality scores pay less for the same position, and low quality scores pay more. There's a few characteristics that Google claims can improve the landing page experience by doing any of the following. One, offer relevant, useful, and original content. A, be specific when the user wants something particular, and be general when the user wants options. What that means is, let's say you are designing websites for a uh, a shoe brand, an e-commerce brand, and someone is typing in Nike shoes. When you want to be specific, you give them a specific page about the exact uh, model or type or type of Nike shoe that they're looking for, like Air Force Ones. Uh, you show them that specific shoe if they type it in, but if they're just typing in a search such as shoes, a broad term, you show them a page with multiple different options so that they can look through it. So it's just keeping in mind what that customer needs, that visitor, and presenting them to a page that they're going to engage with better. Two is going to be promote transparency and foster trustworthiness on your site. Three, make mobile and computer navigation easy. And then four, decrease your landing page load time. Most of these suggestions are way too generic and basic to be of much use. So instead, I'll talk about what I believe are some of the most important factors. One is going to be content relevance. So how relevant is the content on your website to the ad that you're presenting in front of people? Two is going to be the site speed. So how fast your site is loading? Three, user engagement, so time on site, events, so when someone actually clicks a video or they click something on your site that's interactive, page views, page scroll depth, all these different things are going to factor into engagement. The better those are, the better your landing page experience is going to be. Four is going to be responsive design, so your landing page looks good on a mobile device. And then five is going to be trust and transparency which Google does talk about, but they're less specific. So specifically, this is going to be privacy policy and terms and conditions linked on the landing page. So this all being said, what do the customers of your clients or your business want? What your customers want and what Google wants are actually quite similar. Your customers want valuable information about the services they're inquiring about, so logical, and they also want information about your business, which creates a sense of trust, so emotion. So there's two different aspects and in the next section of this video I'm going to be showing you how to systematically discover what those aspects are for customers. So let's get to it. Much of the logical and emotional needs of your customers can be discovered through the actual phrases they use to find your services. Search terms not only indicate the precise services people need but also hint at other psychological needs they have in the process of hiring. Take for example the following phrases on the screen from keyword research for a roofing campaign. Each one of these highlighted keywords indicates certain emotional and logical needs, and each one can be placed into categories as you'll see here. Note that some of these words are overlapping and actually describing the same thing, but this is really just to show the precise language and the categories of certain psychological and logical needs that people would fall under in terms of looking for a roofer. And you'll improve your landing page relevancy if you use these exact phrases on it, because it's going to be long tail versions of the keywords, as well as you're speaking directly to that customer and talking their language. Um, so keep that in mind while we go through this list. So I'm not going to go through all of these um, in depth, but I will go through some of these columns just to give you a sense of what I'm talking about here. Now, all of your clients or some of them are going to fall under some of these categories of needs psychologically and logically. 
So uh, an emotional one that they want is trust, and this is going to travel across most industries. And at least with roofing, that comes up in terminology in their writing, their phrases that they use, such as BBB accredited, certified, licensed, quality, reliable, recommended, reputable, and top rated. These are all variations of a certain type of term that fall under this category that should be mentioned at least somewhere on that landing page in as many variations that make sense to you. And this is just going to help you to demonstrate trust to that person visiting the website. Some people are going to care about the pricing, maybe even all of them. So affordability, this is something you want to mention. Maybe not mention the precise pricing that you have, but pricing options and packages and uh, allude to that. Quality, people care about uh, expert services, professional specialists. They want someone who really knows what they're doing. So if you can say trusted for 30 plus years in this area, um, expert roofing contractor, um, labeled as yeah, labeled as number one expert roofing contractor in Time Magazine, something something like that. If you have it, um, that would help to build quality as well as trust. Local people care about locally owned, so you can just throw that keyword in there because it's going to help out your relevancy for your ad, and then some logical stuff too. If you're the business owner, this is going to seem simple, but sometimes you don't even think of it because it's so easy to you. Like it's obvious that you offer metal roofs as well as rubber and slate, but as a customer, they might not know that those are options. So you want to put those on the website. If you are a marketing agency or consultant, um, always do some research in the logical like service types and what is offered of your clients so that you know what to put on the landing pages as well as what to be advertising in the ad in the first place. Sector, commercial, industrial, residential, and then call to actions are basically the different types of services that they could hire you for. There could be repairs on the bottom there. They could be hiring you for replacements or installations of a new roof. And they'll probably be asking for next steps of like an estimate or an inspection or a quote. Those are kind of overlapping terms, but they might have different applications. For example, let's say you're um, doing this for a commercial roofing uh, contractor in that case maybe you don't say get an estimate but instead you say get a quote or a bid so those terms might actually vary based off if you're doing this for like commercial or residential so knowing these terms and using these as your call to action is going to increase conversions and is going to increase your relevancy so step number two is going through customer reviews. Customer reviews are a gold mine when it comes to writing landing page copies. So it's definitely something I would suggest you spend at least 20 minutes with for each campaign. So head on over to Yelp, Google Reviews, Facebook, Home Advisor, wherever there are reviews for customers in the industry you are researching and start reading through two to four star review posts. Stick with the middle range reviews since these tend to be less biased than the extremes and therefore provide more helpful and critical information about the pros and cons of services. Take note of the language used in these reviews and place anything interesting and or useful in a Google Sheet to be used for later. These are some of the reviews that I found on Yelp while quickly looking for roofing contractors. And this one in particular is talking about communication problems, specifically around pricing where towards the end of the job, the contractor increased pricing because he uh, mistakenly forgot something during inspection or didn't measure correctly. Um, so communication is a pattern that I keep seeing after reading for 20 minutes through these. Communication with roofing contractors is very important to the customers and this is something that you're not really going to find in the keyword research specifically, but you're going to find it in the reviews. So really hitting on that hard, how you or your client's business differentiates from competitors when it comes to communicating with your customers is really important. You can do this through just straight sales copy, mentioning the process and how you stay connected and communicate with your customers, as well as providing reviews, customer reviews that are written on your landing page that specifically address how good you are at communicating. Next one is also communication one where she signed up for an estimate. She wanted to get an estimate for a roof and the contractor was an hour late and didn't call or send a text to mention that he was going to be late. Then once he arrived, he mentioned that they don't offer metal roofing, even though on the phone call, she mentioned that she has a metal roof. So this is also miscommunication and this is a pattern that I just continually saw through Yelp reviews. Next one is going to be upselling, so aggressive upsells. 
from this company who uh, she really just originally needed some uh, tiles or something fixed on her roof, some shingles. Uh, so it, it, she assumed it would be a small repair, but the person was suggesting that she remove um, the entire roof and replace everything. Uh, so it was much, much bigger than she expected and it doesn't seem like she felt like this company was trying to uh, help her rather they were just trying to sell her on a bigger service and in contrast this next one is the total opposite where he actually is not a customer of this business but he had to write a review because this guy showed up for what he thought was going to be a repair job and the guy said you actually don't need to repair it uh, this is why and this is what you can do and at, towards the end, he says, as a tradesman myself, I appreciate that people will tell you not to spend money and why. I definitely will be calling them uh, with any roofing needs that I have down in the future. So that's that's also important to note too, just as a side note here is like, even this is good for business, even when you tell people you can't do it and they, they don't need you for it. It's good for business. I mean, this person's always going to be living in a house for the most part. So you're just going to be the go-to person down the road. Um, but other than that, uh, indicating that there's going to be no changes in pricing and that you are going to give honest feedback and uh, expert advice to them on what they should do moving forward and we'll never push them we'll never make try to make a sale just for the sake of making a sale so doing this sort of language and going through these reviews you never find this through the keywords themselves Next up, step three, look through competitors' landing pages. And generally, this is step three, and um, I don't do it right off the bat just because a lot of competitors don't really know what they're doing, especially local service-based businesses, unless they have like an agency running it for them. And a lot of agencies don't know what they're doing either. So uh, it's not always the best thing just to go off of your competitors' landing pages. But what is interesting to note on your competitors' landing pages is um, some different design aspects that you may have not thought of, sales copy, um, page structure, potential trust signals that you may have not discovered through keyword research. These are all good things to look for. So just perform a basic Google search and look through some of these ads. Also make sure not to click the ad, but right click and do copy and open in a new tab. Uh, because if you click to add, it's gonna cost them money and that's really just not cool. So if you're doing this, right click it, copy link address and open in a new tab just so you don't charge people money that they don't owe. Also a quick note that sometimes you won't be able to see all the advertisers in your local area or the area that you're trying to research because your IP address of your um, computer or your phone wherever you're searching is located in a certain geolocation and if they have their ad set up in a certain way their ads aren't going to show to you because they're out of state or out of location. So a way around this is just to use the Google ad preview tool in the Google Ads dashboard. You need to be a paying customer to be using this. And you just simply go in here, you can change the device, you can change the location, and type in different searches. And it's gonna show you the search results as if you were someone actually located in those areas making that search. And uh, you can't copy and paste these, you'll just have to manually type in some of these uh, URLs here, but this is another way that you can research local businesses that are running ads there that are not showing to everybody around the country. Next up, we want to talk about how many landing pages you want, and this is a difficult one to answer because it's a little bit complex. Um, ideally, you are deciding how many landing pages based off of the build of your account. So your account is going to have varying ad groups based around different services, um, different needs. And those ad groups are going to be pointing at certain landing pages. So I don't really determine landing pages until I've determined the build of my account. So here's the example build of an account right here. Uh, just take with this with a grain of salt, the keywords and everything. I just want to show the different ad groups. My client in particular doesn't want to promote repairs and emergency type services. They only want to do new installations. So we only need one landing page here. Um, so all the roofing company and new roof installations will go to one page because like there's no need to write a new page for new roof installations if someone's looking for a roofing company they they usually explain the same thing um, the thing is though roofing company is a generic term so someone typing that in could still need repairs done to their house not an actual new installation you don't know based off of that key phrase so he doesn't want to promote these so I'm not going to put them in his ads or his keywords 
but I will put it on the landing page that he does offer repairs just because that is something he offers. You already paid for the click. You might as well get the lead. Um, let's say for example, though, he did want to promote repairs and emergency services in that scenario. I'd probably put repairs and emergency on their own landing page. You don't need to do this. You could put them all on one page. It's not going to be that big of a deal if you're like a little bit lazy on it. But if you really want to like optimize it, you can do a new page just because the messaging for someone looking for a repair emergency, like, like um, emergency leak repair for the roof is going to be higher urgency. So you can really hit on the fact that you're going to be fast and your quotes are going to be affordable and they're going to be quick. And you can design that landing page specifically around that with the right phrasing, right terminology and get a little bit better relevancy score doing so. Um, that's a little bit, this split here is not super apparent, but let's say your client is also offering siding as well as gutter work, in which case like gutters, you do a, a brand new landing page for it, as well as siding. You don't send them to a generic page that talks about roofing, gutters, and siding and all that stuff. It's better just to send to specific ones. All right, now we're actually getting to the template that I promised earlier on in this video. And uh, what we're gonna cover are landing page best practices. And here are the elements that you wanna focus on. First is gonna be like the layout, the content, and the design elements. So design elements are gonna be the imagery, videos, the coloration, branding, etc. Layout is just literally gonna be the structure of it. Content is what is written on the site. Responsive design, so this is designed for a mobile device mainly, but also for tablets and like handheld devices like that, since your ads are likely gonna be promoting more than just to um, computer users, you're also promoting to people on mobile phones a thank you page or some sort of funnel after they've submitted a form on your website. A, B, split testing. So split testing is just gonna be testing different elements on your website and sending traffic uh, one to 50% to one version and 50% to the next version and then seeing which one performs better. We're gonna talk about that real quick. Load speed, so just how fast it loads. And then tracking, tracking is gonna be like tracking the engagement as well as conversion tracking. Okay, so here's the example design template that I presented to a client. And we're just gonna take this one element at a time, starting with general design principles. So when you're designing a landing page, the first thing to keep in mind is simplicity and clarity is more important than flashiness. So if we look through this real quick, this landing page isn't like extremely well-designed necessarily or flashy or impressive, but it simply conveys the right information in a good order and presents it in a way that people are only looking at one element at a time and it's pretty clear what needs to be done next. So keep that in mind. Uh, some ways that you can do this is by keeping your call to actions down uh, to a limited amount. Um, so for this scenario, we just have a phone call as well as a form submission. You can um, call these out in different ways. So instead of request an estimate, you could have another button down here that says, um, get a quick quote or something like that. So you're just calling it out in a different way, but uh, it stands that you still only have two call to actions. Uh, I prefer to have two or multiple different versions in this industry because some people prefer to call rather than do form and some people prefer form rather than calling. So you want both of those options. Another design principle is white space. So for clarity, you want to have actually quite a bit of space in between each section of your, your website and your landing page, as well as from the sides here. Um, from each section, it's so you don't overwhelm the visual um, space of someone so that they're only looking at one element at a time. So you're only looking at this section on their desktop. When they land on your page, that's all they see. And then when they scroll down, all they see is this. So they only focus on each element and information in that space. Uh, whereas a lot of SEO websites will present a bunch of information at once and it just throws at people and they get confused and they don't do anything. So you, you want clarity and actually more space than what you expect. Um, space from the sides here too sometimes looks a little weird, but it actually helps for scanning. So this could be like anywhere from 700 to 1,000 pixels wide. So all your content is within that space when it comes to a desktop view. So people don't have to scan from side to side with their eyes. Um, it makes It's actually tiring and it, it's slow. Uh, for them to scan through your site. This makes it easy so they can scroll all the way down. It's gonna increase your, your scroll depth as well, which is important. 
Um, let's see here. Another thing to keep in mind is composition and clarity once again. So if you have a hero image like this, you don't want your actual text to be blurred out or like not being shown or a little confused because the background image is taking away from it. You can see here it's over an area of this image where it's very clear to see this text and this color actually pops out. So the colors you want to pop out on the main call to action, which is request an estimate here, you want this color to not be present anywhere else on the screen so that it pops out. So the eyes navigate to either one of these elements here. Another thing is the composition of the hero image. You can actually see that the eyes start with brand. If you follow this composition, literally this is pointing down at the call to action. His foot is coming down here, and there's actually movements of the eyes going to the call to action area here, even with the clouds pointing at that too. So it's really cool how you can do that. It seems little, but it is important for making uh, a clear website that converts. So with these words specifically, um, the main headline, I like to put the main keyword in it that you're targeting for this ad group. We're doing like new roof installations and roofing contractors. So it's just generic roofing company. Um, next headline here, servicing is like a different version of service and people are typing in roofing services. So this will help with relevancy a little bit. Local is another word that we talked about earlier on in this video. MA, so people are typing in geo modifiers. It's gonna help your relevancy as well. Residence, residential, so it's a version of residential. And then for 60 plus years, this is just a trust signal right here, an experience signal. Contact us today for a free and fast quote from one of our expert roofing contractors. Another uh, different version of this, as well as expert, was a search keyword that people actually use. It's a long tail version of it, so adds relevancy. And now this line is actually important. You want to tell people exactly what it is that they're getting when they opt in. A lot of people have like a form and they don't really explain what's going to happen next. Most people, as you saw in those reviews that we talked about earlier, need to invest their own time when it comes to getting a quote for their roof. So they want to know exactly what's going to happen next. Just a quick little side note, I've tested this having a, a sub headline like this that actually mentioned what's going to happen next versus not and it increased conversions around 10% on the landing page just by having a single sentence. Now you can have different versions of a form opt-in. This could be a button that has a pop-up on screen with the form. It could be a button that goes to a different landing page with just the form itself or uh, you could just have the form on this display area right here with the text uh, off to the side. I like having the pop-up just because it's a micro action that you get them to do. It's less intimidating when they don't actually see the form and they click this uh, and then they have to put in their information. Um, it's just a small little psychological hack to have a pop-up rather, rather than the form itself. Now, what would be on the form? Uh, this would be the information for this particular industry. Uh, it's always good to talk to your client or if you're the business owner, just think this through. What information do you absolutely need from the customer in order to progress to the next stage of that sales journey? And for this particular industry, we want a first name, last name, phone, email, the service type, whether it's a new installation or repair, uh, job type, residential, commercial, industrial, the town or property it was located in. Uh, you could do this specific address, but some people are going to be concerned with putting their address into a random website, so you're going to lose out on that. So instead, we just say the particular town just to make sure that it's within the area. And when, then when they actually schedule the estimate, they can ask the, the address in person on a phone call. And then additional information if there's any uh, additional requirements from that customer. Now, this is pretty much the perfect amount of information for this industry. You don't want too much because then people are not going to submit a form and you don't want too little just because you won't get good leads and you won't have enough information to push it to the next stage, which is going to be turning them into an actual customer. Um, scrolling down here, what we also want to note is that the progression of information is important here too. So 
we start with low hanging fruit if we land on this page some people are just going to be ready to get a quote right away some people need more information and the people that need more information just like with a sales conversation you usually start off with some background about your company um, this particular client had a video which is good if you have rich media like that because people are going to watch it it adds more trust easier than text will it shows that you're an actual company especially when the owners like specifically talking on that video um, and it is useful also for relevancy and engagement on your landing page people are going to stay on it for a while and be taking actions on the landing page itself this whole section is all about trust it's all about showing that you're a real legit company we even post the, uh, their reviews on Google right here and uh, yeah that's pretty much it and then we continue showing that they're legit with certificates and awards um, one thing to note here is from doing research of other landing pages of their competitors I realized that master elite certification by GAF was a thing and that this client was master elite certified and there's only 33% of all roofing contractors who are qualified as that so that's something to mention um, so this I wouldn't be able to find without looking at the competitors landing pages as well so that's a good use of other competitors landing pages is looking for like certifications and awards that you may have not thought of if you're not in the industry um, so we present all those here more trust and then we do a call to action uh, section like throughout this just in case people are ready to like, take action so they don't have to scroll all the way back up to the top but personally if I were um, doing this again what I would do is a sticky header even on desktop where maybe this logo disappears in a request and estimate button uh, appears here and then the phone number button or phone number stays here as well and as you scroll down that sticky header is gonna stick to the top of the page just make sure it's not too big so people can actually read and uh, pay attention to the info that's on the website so if that's the case then you don't need any of these sections further down we hit them with more logical stuff so the actual services so once again if you're in a sales conversation you give a little bit of background about what uh, your business and then also like what you do like what you offer so asphalt shingles metal roof slate and rubber um, you can put some images behind this make it have a different kind of design it's just whatever your preference is uh, notice too we have more uh, keywords new roof installations that's one of our major keywords and it's in one of the headline twos here and then multiple shingle types so this is just logically people are going to need a certain type or they're looking for a certain type you can also put alt text on these images that say asphalt shingles metal roofs uh, slate shingles or tiles and rubber roofs and the alt text is read by Google AdWords so alt text on your images that have some keywords in it uh, should help a little bit with your relevancy not huge but might as well have it in there um, also this section too once again is padded on the side so it makes it easy for people to go through this really fast as you scroll down we have more trust uh, thousands of satisfied customers see what some of your neighbors are saying about that about us so this is a pretty good sales line right here because like your neighbors we don't know if these are actually the neighbors of the person visiting but they are local so technically neighbors could be your local community they don't need to be literally in your neighborhood so it's a good little sales line that I like to use um, we just post some of their good reviews make sure that some of these reviews are uh, talking about communication and uh, addressing any sort of objections that you found in the other reviews before so this is gonna people are actually gonna read these and you don't want to put too much because it just gets overwhelming and people aren't going to read it uh, the better the shorter the more punchy the better these reviews and also if they have like images of the people even better you can do from multiple review sites it doesn't have to be all Google you can do like home advisor Facebook Yelp I like to just literally snapshot them and put them in here because it makes it look more personal and then at the bottom uh, link in a new tab so these would open in a new tab they would be links and they could go to their Google reviews page home advisor Yelp and Facebook and this just shows that you care about what they need you're not afraid to show your reviews you're trustworthy right so I like linking to the actual review pages just make sure these open link in a new uh, tab just so they stay on your landing page another call to action 
more projects or check out some of their past projects it just gives more information about your business so these are like portfolio images of like you shaking hands or your customer shaking hands with uh, your client shaking hands with their customer after a job all happy uh, maybe you working on a roof with your crew um, some uh, a picture of your office space your van whatever your trucks now next one would be need help with financing this is kind of like last ditch off uh, offers so this could be like they come to the end of your sales pitch and you're like well I just don't have the money for it well in that case we offer financing and we got you covered right and then you can even give a last ditch effort uh, urgency sort of pitch where you say look we actually have this deal five hundred dollars off on new roof specials for the month of May um, so you could add another section just like that too and uh, additional information this is just common with all the other roofers they talk about the best products you could also talk about uh, lifetime warranties like what warranties you offer on these different products here and then basic information about your business at the bottom and then a um, standard footer and then in this footer too it's not in this but you can link to a privacy policy as well as a terms and service page and this is going to help out your relevancy it's also going to help your ads to get approved sooner if it's a brand new account um, so make sure to link to a separate page privacy policy and terms and conditions um, you could choose to link to your actual website as well. You can uh, link it as full website, and if your full website has those pages, the privacy policy and terms and conditions, those will count. So that is the general gist of this. Um, I think I covered most of the landing page. So the next thing we want to talk about is the responsive design of your website. So just make sure that you're designing your elements to fit on the mobile device as well as tablets and you'll also likely change up your call to action a little bit here um, what i like to do and specifically in the roofing industry is to have a click to call button so that people on their mobile device can click this and it's going to automatically prompt their phone to make a call to the business now if you, you were doing this let's say for a different industry um, maybe dentistry what i like to do for them is have two buttons here a call click to call as well as click to get directions and then click to get directions opens up the map app in their phone with directions to the company but it keeps this window open as well so they can still look at the website this is useful because people care about where the office is located in that industry for a home service they come to you so it doesn't really matter um, what I also like to do is definitely make sure you have a sticky header that follows the top of the screen or is at the bottom of the screen and just make sure it's not too big so it doesn't cover all the content. Um, you may choose to change some of the types of, uh, of call to actions. In the case of this button where it was get a request a quote, you could just put the actual form on here without the button in the pop-up but that's really just up the personal preference. When it comes to responsive design, really all I'm saying is just make sure things fit on the screen. I've seen some landing pages that just don't have things fitting on the screen. It looks extremely unprofessional. Um, and that's one more quick thing that I forgot to mention on design is a lot of people have come to me with landing pages that they design themselves and they're looking to, to spend like $1,500 in ads, but things are just not aligned. They don't have aligned aspects things are um, just blurry, they have blurry images, and it, it boggles my mind that people think that that does not matter um, when it does. People care about professionality, and if they see a website that doesn't have things aligned, like if things are just not organized, then it's just not a good sign. Now back on this main landing page here, the next thing we wanna talk about is your thank you page and then funnel, and I don't have a design for this to show you, but I'll just talk it through with you. But after someone submits a form on your landing page, then what you wanna do is definitely send them to a, another page and it's gonna be a thank you page. And this could either have just writing on it, but ideally an, uh, a video would be awesome as well. If your, your client is willing to make a video that thanks the person who submitted the form and tells them what the next steps are gonna be, then this is gonna increase trust and help to retain uh, not just retain clients, but sell jobs in the first place and also get people to um, actually schedule something with you and pick up their phone when you call the schedule. 
So we're in this to get customers, not just leads. So you can't just treat the lead as something that just happens and then you're done with it. Ideally, you keep moving them through your sales funnel and you can start selling your job and your services before they even before you even contact them by phone and before you even schedule a time to do a, an on-site visit. So having a landing page, a thank you page that either uh, that talks about the communication process, the process of getting a quote, the fact that you're going to provide a quote but no work is going to be done and they have no obligations to hire you as a service provider as well as there's going to be no upsells, no hard selling um, and it's completely free and really just hitting on that psychological component that we saw in the reviews earlier it's going to help to build trust and people are actually going to schedule a estimate with your with your customer for different industries you might need more of a funnel where there's actually like an email sequence but that would be more so for maybe like a meal delivery or like a software company like SaaS. In those scenarios, it might be a little bit more complex, the follow-up sequence that you need. But keep that in mind that once people become a lead, that's not the end of the story. There is a sales process. It's basically the handover from marketing to sales. And there needs to be a process there for your client to get uh, the best results possible. Next, we got A-B split testing. And what that would involve is sending traffic 50% split between two different versions of your landing pages. You might as well do this for a lot of local businesses. It's going to take a while for you to actually make the optimizations. It could take literally a year to figure out which version works the best to make a proper judgment with the right amount of info and data. But it's totally worth it. And uh, what you want to consider is changing the smallest element possible to get the biggest change and a lot of people will change like colors and like organization of info but really what I prefer to work with is the call to actions and a small one that you could potentially do in this scenario is just change the way that you word this call to action it seems small but it could change make a huge difference instead of saying request an estimate you could say request pricing and this could get more people opting in because it's a little bit less intimidating than an estimate. Some people might, might not be ready for what an estimate entails, meaning like interacting with people and having people come to their house, but they're willing to request a pricing. And even though the pricing is also going to involve you coming to the house, um, you, you really can't get good, good pricing from a contractor without them looking at the job itself in most cases. Um, that that phrasing and wording might produce better conversions. So you're looking for ways that you can maybe word your call to action in a different way or have a different sequence uh, of, of call to action. And I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Um, uh, I was trying to help a buddy out with his his uh, surfing company and he designed surfboards for people. And instead of having a call to action, for uh, to buy a surfboard which is extremely intimidating most people are, are not going to do that online what i figured out from his sales process is he always does a 3d model and then presents that to his customers before they actually buy from him so the call to action we changed from purchase a surfboard or or request pricing or something like that to request a free design 3d design Right, so you, you change it in a small way just to promote a earlier stage of the sales process, which is less intimidating. So think of ways that you can change your call to action. Hopefully, I described that right. Uh, rather than changing like design elements. Another thing that you can do, which I mentioned before, is adding certain clarity uh, to some of your around your call to action. So you could put information down here about no obligations. Uh, because people feel obligated and pressured in the sales process based on the reviews. So you can talk about adding a line right here saying like zero obligations, uh, no work done, no payment until agreed upon or something like that. And I've done stuff like that where it's changed conversions by 10%, which is extremely significant in any industry. Different software offers the A-B split testing uh, capabilities. You could do ClickFunnels, Instapage, 
or Thrive Themes, which has a add-on for testing. Either way, just make sure you have it. It's If you're a local business, it's not always necessary because it takes so long, but if you want to really optimize and outcompete competition, then definitely be testing two different versions of your landing pages. Next up, we have load speed. Uh, you really want this website to load as fast as possible. So when it comes to design, one way that you can do that is to make sure that your images are optimized. And what this basically means is if you have an image right here that is, let's say, 300 by 300 pixels, but the actual image that you're, you're squishing into this 300 by 300 pixel area is like 3000 by 3000, then it's 10 times too large and it's adding a bunch of weight to your website and slowing it down. So instead what you can do is take that image and either go to someone on Fiverr or do it yourself. You can use pixlr.com. Um, what you can do is just reduce the size of this to 300 by 300 so that it doesn't actually change its shape when it comes in here. Now it will take away from the resolution of that image and make it a little bit more blurry. So you do need to find that, that good ground between uh, quality image but small so that you're not adding unnecessary weight to your website here. So that's the biggest one is the weight essentially of your, your imagery. Make sure all this stuff is optimized and it's as small as it needs to be without becoming too blurry or, or ruining the actual experience of the user and their ability to see what information it's conveying. There's other things that you can do, but if you want to test what those are, go to Google PageSpeed Insights or Pingdom PageSpeed Tools, and you can test the page speed of your landing pages and get a sense of how fast they are painting uh, the imagery to the end user and loading and also different things that you can do to fix those and you can do this yourself or just hire someone on Upwork I do that it will usually cost you between like a hundred and three hundred dollars depending on who the site speed optimizer is and how uh, well reviewed they are and then lastly think about your hosting too hosting is gonna play a part into how fast your landing page is loading so I like SiteGround hosting. Shared hosting is usually fine for most local businesses, but if you're gonna spend money anywhere, you might as well just upgrade your hosting to like a dedicated VPN server. And a lot of hosting companies do offer this. Um, so upgrade your hosting as much as you need to to get that loading as fast as possible. And it's a good use of your money. Most people want, they have a slow landing page and website and they wanna just put more money into their ads to, to get more leads, but at the end of the day, it's way more effective just to put the money towards speeding up your website. And then lastly, we got tracking. So tracking, you definitely wanna have Google Analytics on this landing page, and this is gonna help you to understand user behavior. And Google Analytics also integrates with Google Ads, so you'll be able to see that information next to your Google Ads data. This is useful for troubleshooting any sort of issues with user engagement and making sure that the people that you're actually sending to your website are using it. Even if they're not turning into leads, you, you wanna make sure that they're actually scrolling through and looking through it. Another way that you can troubleshoot and determine different organizations of your data is using a heat map software called Hotjar. And Hotjar is completely free. You can choose to pay. It'll just give you a little bit more in features, but I found the free version to be enough to both get heat map tracking that basically tells you how many people clicked certain areas as well as where their cursor is going and how far they're scrolling down your website. This is really interesting data to see. If you see people dropping off at certain points or just looking at certain areas, this will change how you design your website. Um, you can also record the people's actual visit to your website. So you can watch as if you were them going through the website itself, which is really cool. It's a lot of value for a free tool, so you might as well put this on all your landing pages. And that's it for this video. Hopefully I covered pretty much everything that I know about landing pages. And hopefully too, although we're specifically talking about a home service industry, some of the concepts and ideas and elements that I talked about will apply to every sort of industry that you could possibly work with, whether they're local business or a national brand. Let me know in the comments if this was a useful video. If you have any more questions for me in particular that are that I didn't specifically address here, um, like the video if you found this valuable, and also subscribe for more videos around Google Ads. And until next time, guys, cheers.